Hello, good evening everybody. My name is Dr. Iqbal Musani and I'm a pediatric dentist. I come from Pune uh, and I also specialize in treating newborns, infants and their breastfeeding problems. I'm a consultant with the Motherhood Hospitals Pune and uh, it has been almost, uh, almost a year now and the journey with Motherhood Hospitals has been brilliant. Uh, there's so much to learn every day and the team is fantastic in Pune and uh, recently also the team in Pune has received the best pediatrician and the neonatology department award so congratulations to the whole team at Motherhood Pune. Well they say that uh, while the eyes are the window of the soul the mouth is the door to health. So if your mouth is healthy your whole self, your baby is going to be healthy. So when we are going to be talking today about breastfeeding and what are the problems, can a tongue tie cause breastfeeding issues? We will cover it in the following contents. We will look at breastfeeding, what are the recommendations of the WHO, UNICEF and the IIP, the role of tongue and what does a proper swallow do? So what exactly is happening when you swallow? The dynamics of a swallow, how many times do we swallow? How does it impact growth and development? And if there is a tongue tie, how things can go wrong? Next, we will look at what causes mothers to give up breastfeeding. I'm sure every mother wants to nurse and wants to breastfeed. And if there is an impairment because of a tongue tie, how does it all pan out? What are the issues? How do you find out whether your infant has got a tongue tie or no? What are your symptoms? What are the baby's symptoms? That's what we will discuss. We will discuss the impact of tongue tie on the overall growth and development of the child. Then if we say if at all, if a baby has got a tongue tie, how do we go about uh, managing it? And finally some case reports and some other stories. That's what we will do. So I think whilst uploading the PowerPoint, it has taken some different format and therefore uh, it's, it's looking for that. So all right, let's begin then. What are the recommendations for breastfeeding from the Indian Academy of Pediatrics, the World Health Organization and the UNICEF? They all say that from birth until the age of six months, a mother has to exclusively breastfeed exclusively breastfeed no formula none of the pediatricians neonatologists doctors who would say formula unless and until there is a dire need there is a life and death situation for whatever reasons the mother is not able to nurse or the baby is not able to nurse only then the formula is what is advocated however every baby is born is born and it is wired to survive by sucking mother's milk and the mother is also made a mother to be able to nurse the baby that's god's law nothing can change from there unless and until there is a dire need so breastfeeding for the infant's health we all know that it's a hundred percent food there is no need for any supplement then there is no need to give water the mother's antibodies and all the protective factors, you all know much more than me as a pediatric dentist in this facet. We also know that if the mother is breastfeeding, then her nursing supply, everything is uh, intact. If the mother, if the baby is not nursing, the supply starts to fall and then it just vanishes. So that is very important. If the mother is nursing the baby, the postpartum depression is practically not there because the bonding between the baby and the mother has already happened. All those mothers who have nursed their babies, uh, they have less incidences of breast cancers and cervical cancers. So they have a healthier life than all those mothers who did not nurse or breastfeed their babies. So let's look at what does a swallow do? when we actually swallow. So can I request all of you all to please close your mouths and just swallow your saliva. So when we 
close our mouths and swallow the saliva the tongue is actually hitting the upper jaw or the inside of the palate it is resting behind the front four teeth it's resting behind the front four teeth and it's hitting onto the palate that's what it is doing and that's how you complete the swallow the tongue is elevating transferring the saliva from the anterior middle and the posterior portion and throwing it down into the food pipe that's the normal function of the tongue for that to happen the tongue has to touch the palate in all circumstances in normal swallowing now understand that when the baby is in the mother's womb it is swallowing 3 ounces of amniotic fluid every day so the swallowing function begins when the baby is in the mother's womb so if there is anything wrong in the swallow if there is anything wrong with the tongue or if the baby has a tongue tie that's there in the mother's womb itself and therefore there is going to be impact of that when the baby is going to be born impact of that on the nursing function as well as the growth and development of the child okay now we understand from our science that any individual swallows almost 1000 to 2500 times in a day so when you are swallowing for almost 1500 2000 times in a day and you don't do it right there has to be some impact on it now tongue is a very powerful muscle it's a bag of muscles so it's a group of muscles which is so strong and the tongue is the one which actually hits the palate when swallowing 2000 times in a day so when the tongue is hitting the palate it actually causes growth and development of the palate in the transverse plane in the anterior posterior plane so when the tongue is hitting the palate there is something like a motor which is there or a hose of a garden where you just sprinkle water at such speed and the tongue is pushing and that's how the palate opens up the maxillary sinuses opens up the nasal airway opens up the sinus airway the sinuses open up and that's how the normal growth and development takes place now understand one thing if the tongue function is impaired or there is a tongue tie with which the baby is born what can go wrong so if a baby is born with a tongue tie typically these are the presentations of a tongue tie wherein the tongue is always tied or the tongue is always attached to the lower jaw however if you see in the pictures if the tongue is tied very close to the lower jaw the tongue cannot move now depending upon where is that attachment if the tongue is attached at the anterior portion middle portion or posterior portion that section of the tongue will have limited mobility so when we go back to our normal swallowing and also normal breathing so close your mouth and breathe where is the position of the tongue the position of the tongue again is in the palate so when you are swallowing 2000 times in a day it is hitting the palate when you are breathing 12 to 15 to 16 times in a minute 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day your tongue has to be in the palate so if there is a tongue tie the position of the tongue is lower if this is my palate this is my palate and this is my tongue and the tongue is attached to the lower jaw and it cannot move then it is always positioned down so when i am swallowing when i am breathing it's not here therefore my palate then does not grow like this but it grows like this so it becomes deep it becomes narrow and because of which it encroaches upon the sinus spaces upon the airway and that's how the baby gets a narrow airway so this is the impact of not having a good tongue function as far as the airway is concerned as far as the growth and development of the upper facial region is concerned so if the baby then is born with a tongue tie we have issues in swallowing therefore 
a good proper alignment of teeth is not happening because the growth and development of the face is not happening face is not happening that's my problem and studies have shown that if a bottle feeding is carried out or pacifiers are encouraged then they also form high palate narrow arches and they are good predictors for sleep apnea sleep apnea is disturbed sleep so to commonly understand baby is not sleeping well or if you have people baby is snoring sometimes you know a uh, lot of uh, parents will tell me that you know my baby makes very cute little sounds when he is sleeping now that is not cute because if you close your mouth and if you are breathing through the nasal airway there is no sound only when you are keeping your mouth open a snoring sound comes that means you are not doing that function where you are supposed to do it from you are supposed to always 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 breathe from the nose and never from the mouth only in emergencies and rare cases your mouth drops down and you breathe through the mouth but that's for a very temporary phase if it is a habitual mouth breathing then there is a growth and development issue there is an airway issue there is a disturbed sleep or sleep apnea issue so that is what is the impact which is happening and understand one thing no if interchanging or breathing from the mouth is okay then we should have been able to eat from our nose does that happen drinking from the nose does that happen no it does not happen so therefore a good breathing function from the nose is dependent on a good tongue function and therefore whether the baby has got tongue tie or no needs to be evaluated and assessed at birth so they say that when the breast bottle or pacifier is placed into the infant's mouth who cannot bring the posterior as well as the anterior portion of the tongue forward the oxygen supply to the brain reduces okay means what because we said this is the palate okay the tongue is in a lower position and when the bottle is given the tongue moves back when the tongue moves back it is encroaching upon the airway so now if you look at the two bottom pictures the picture where it says the airway is wide open is normal breast feeding and the picture where it shows that the airway is blocked is bottle feeding now understand and visualize when you put a bottle in your child's mouth the child jerks and goes behind and the tongue also goes backward when the tongue goes backward it encroaches on the airway the baby's brain development takes place in the first 90 days almost 60% of the brain development takes place so those first 3 months or few months if the baby's brains are going to get less oxygen there are going to be repercussions which will happen because of it all these children who then are diagnosed with sleep apnea or disturbed sleep have a bad quality of life they are socially isolated they are in depression they don't have a good uh, sleep they are either diagnosed with add adhd hyperactivity aggressive excessive daytime sleeplessness uh, uh, so 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 they are not at peace they are tired all the time they have poor academic performance and they are anti social adults they they don't have a good social life so tongue function breathing function oxygen supply to the brain if all these things are not okay then there could be a child who could be having disordered sleep or obstructive sleep apnea what else happens if a baby is born with a tongue tie okay we said that some of the babies who are born with tongue tie make sounds while suckling or while sucking okay so they will drink the milk and make sounds like so when this kind of a sound is there that means the baby is drinking air along with your milk so at birth if the baby is born with a lip tie or a tongue tie it results in a poor latch or a poor seal okay and there are clicking sounds there are smacking sounds the result is that this clicking allows air to be swallowed by the baby he has got pain okay the baby has got reflux the baby is throwing up 
the baby cries the baby needs to be carried all the time the baby needs to be either held in a sitting position or like how you put the baby in a car chair or a pram only then he keeps quiet you put him down he starts crying again now that is what happens and this is what is called as aerophagia induced reflux or because of the air there is reflux and it's not an acidic reflux it's not that because he's got acidity or the acid is coming back and the baby is throwing up and there is a reflux so we need to understand that very carefully why do babies spit up so what happens is when the baby is sucking or when a small child is sucking or eating or feeding okay that's the time when the tongue is supposed to close the shutter of the airway okay so there is an airway and there is a food way okay so that shutter is the tongue function if that is not working properly as in a tongue tied baby okay the milk goes near the airway up to the airway and it's thrown back that's why the baby spits up because the tongue function is compromised why do babies gag why are they picky eaters now at the age of 6 months you will start giving your babies solid foods supplementary foods right at that point of time why do some of the babies gag and choke and they only eat those things which they want to i have so many children who come to me and the parents are complaining mera bachcha bhaji nahi khata hai mera bachcha meat nahi khata hai mera bachcha mashed potato nahi khata hai mera bachcha uh, musambi nahi khata hai uh, fibrous jaise palak ho gaya methi ho gaya wo kuch bhi fibrous nahi khata hai now why is he not having different textures of foods the problem is if the tongue is tied these fibers of foods the meat the methi the bhaji the carrot the musambi ka shreds all these get collected at the posterior portion of the tongue the child is not able to move because the tongue is not moving the child is not able to collect that food make it into a bolus and swallow or throw it back down into the throat now because that is not happening he avoids to eat all these foods he avoids to eat mashed potato meat methi bhaji all of those things and then he says mama i don't like this and the parents come and tell us nee isko ye acha nahi lagta he avoids eating this but open the mouth and check the tongue for its function that's important now hiccups have put in over here i don't know why hiccups happen i have been doing a lot of lit- literature reading i have reached out to a lot of teachers and mentors all over the world but there is one thing which is a finding that if the baby is having hiccups while in the mother's womb or when the baby is born is having hiccups we need to assess for tongue function that's what we need to do so elder kids parents come and tell us why others don't understand my child when he or she is speaking now sa sh ta th d g n la 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 dr these are all tongue functions if your tongue is free okay there is no tongue tie and the brain is obviously okay that means there is some restriction the tongue is not able to move and therefore a free tongue is important and unrestricted or a tongue tie tied less tongue is important for normal speaking also why do we have narrow faces in today's times tongue tied children do not eat fibrous things so there is no musculature activity or work up for your facial muscles so the growth does not happen and there is a long face syndrome there is a long face syndrome is what we get that's why we get narrower and longer faces mouth breathers okay what we already discussed so what causes mothers to give up breastfeeding two of the most common problems are a lip tie which is on the screen to your left or your left hand and your right hand which is a tongue tie let's discuss quickly the next 10 12 minutes about those and then we will discuss about our uh, patient stories so i'm going to play a video over here In order for effective breastfeeding to occur, a good latch is required between the infant mouth and the breast. 
An effective latch requires a few things from the infant. The mouth is widely open with lips that are flared or curled out. The tongue is extended over the gum and under the nipple. The nipple needs to be fully inserted into the mouth including some or all of the areola. If any of these factors are missing, breastfeeding may become ineffective. Symptoms for the mother include prolonged feedings, painful nipples, and decreased milk production while infants may exhibit noisy suckling and gas pains. A normal infant tongue has good mobility. Tongue tie is when the tongue is stuck to the floor of the mouth preventing adequate mobility which leads to an ineffective latch. The tongue tie may also be hidden under the mucosal lining, a condition called posterior tongue tie. With tongue tie, the tongue tip does not extend over the gum causing the newborn's gum to chew on the nipple during feeding. Also, the up-down motion of the tongue is hindered preventing an adequate suck resulting in decreased milk production. A surgical procedure called tongue tie release can easily correct this cause of ineffective breastfeeding. Upper lip tie is when the newborn's upper lip does not curl up or flare out enough resulting in loss of suction and the nipple to be incompletely engaged within the mouth. A surgical procedure called upper lip tie release can easily correct this cause of ineffective breastfeeding. So back to life. We understood that ineffective breastfeeding for an infant could be because of a tongue tie or a lip tie and or a lip tie. It's mostly always the tongue tie and in few cases lip ties also contribute to ineffective latching. So the suction in the vacuum does not happen. Uh, there is uh, air gasping. That's the sound which comes in. Okay, so in our practice, when we are seeing all these uh, mothers and babies, uh, the problem is that very few pediatricians and neonatologists actually understand what does a tongue tie do to breastfeeding. Very few lactation consultants, I'm sure now a lot of lactation consultants understand. It's a new science evolving more in India. Uh, so a lot of us have tried to go out and study, get trained from uh, teachers abroad, learn and now we are sharing our knowledge and we are trying to understand that you know, there was always this thing that the mother did My dear friends, before blaming the mother that the mother did not come, before you look at the child's eyes, is it a tongue tie or is it a lip tie? है? Just a simple examination which I will teach you and as a mother you can examine it. Okay, so do that. So when we see these parents, when we see these babies, uh, there is a problem. The problem is the tongue tie, the lip tie. But the issue is reflux. The issue is gases, gassy pains. Okay, baby is having too much of colic symptoms. And the problem is with the tongue tie. But the baby is being treated for colic and so many dirty medicines and surgeries are being planned. So if you open the mouth and start looking at the tongue function, that will help us. Okay, and uh, there is one group of people like us who understand a little bit of tongue tie and who understand what it causes as reflux, uh, colic pains, uh, biting of the nipples of the mother, all those things we understand and then therefore we say it is a tongue tie. So mother reaches us, has heard something tongue tie jaise kuch hota nahi hai, apne aap ko ho jayega and there is myself and some other doctors who are saying nahi tongue tie ke wajay se ye sab ho raha hai. So now we get helpless and confused parents who really don't know what to do and whom to follow. It's always a teamwork. So there are a lot of pediatricians and neonatologists who have taught me things, who've sat with me and made me also understand the tongue function, how they view it and they see it. And has, as, as an oral cavity specialist, as a pediatric dentist, how much do I understand of tongue in terms of growth and development, in terms of the correct swallow mechanics, in, in terms of the correct dynamics of the breathing. So we've shared knowledge and therefore it is always a collaborative teamwork between a neotetrologist, a lactation consultant and potentially a pediatrician, a pediatric dentist or an ENT who is doing your tongue tie surgery. But understand one thing, in my practice, in our practice at the mother hospitals, we look at three things. 
we say that okay does the mother and the baby have symptoms that's number one number two all three of us whether it's the neonatologist whether it's the pediatric dentist or whether it is a lactation consultant we open the mouth of the baby and we look for tongue function whether the tongue is able to go forward that's protrude whether it can go side to side lateral okay it can go side to side and third whether it can get elevated three functions of the tongue so we do a functional assessment of the tongue all three of us together sometimes sometimes at varying degrees we debate and deliberate and understand what is going to be best for this mother and for this child and that's when we arrive so that's the symptom the tongue function the clarity in terms of whether anatomically or physically there is a restraint whether the tongue is actually tied the lip is actually tied okay so three things symptoms functional assessment and whether clinically or anatomically structurally whether there is a tie or no and finally the mother comes to us because she is not nursing properly the baby is not nursing the baby is biting that's the symptom that's the chief complaint so if there is a complaint there is a structural problem and we see it that's when we decide okay let's do a surgery and help this mother and baby so we do a comprehensive symptom analysis that's the form we which we get filled up at the mother road hospitals and in our practice and the infant symptoms typically are shallow latch falls asleep by eating whilst eating slides or poops on colic cries a lot reflux clicking and smacking noises we've covered all of this spits up often gagging choking gassy fussy or often poor weight gain hiccups lips under the lips don't curl like say they 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 go uh, so they don't open up they don't flare up they go under and therefore there is difficulty in having a latch okay when nursing or whilst uh, with the bottle whether the baby is chewing the nipple mother's nipple whether the pacifier or the bottle is slipping off easily or the nipple mother's nipple is slipping off easily whether the milk is dribbling out uh, whilst nursing whether the baby is very short sleeping every hour the baby has to get up i have had a mother and i'll play the video of that mother that you know she said that um, every hour the baby gets up then for half an hour one hour i have to nurse and then again one hour he sleeps then again one hour i have to nurse imagine that life for a mother and the baby both nobody is at peace right so milk dribbling out short sleeping mouth breathing again i'm going back that no you know what my baby makes very cute sounds while sleeping that is not cute that is mouth breathing okay for the mother it's like a full time job the nose is often congested so what happens is if the tongue is not swallowing correctly the tongue is connected with your internal ear the internal just at this point the internal ear function is not correct there is some liquid which is supposed to be expressed over there that does not happen properly and these kids often have ear pain pediatrician will say shayad ear pain rahega and uh, they have gopi eyes sometimes the eyes also uh, secrete some solution or some secretion so those uh, uh, are the problem areas or symptoms mother symptoms are creased flattened blanched nipples uh, lactation consultant sits with the mother understands her observes everything Um, a knowledgeable lactation consultant in your team is very important. Reach out, please reach out. There are lipstick shaped nipples, blistered or cut nipples, bleeding nipples. There is lot of pain on latching or no pain on latching. There is pain during nursing. So we capture all of these things which help us to tell us, okay, there is a problem, and we need to help. Poor and incomplete drainage of the uh, breast because the baby is not suckling enough, is not drinking enough. Infected nipples, plug ducts, nipple shield, nipple thrush, and shields need to be used. Baby is preferring one side over the other. That's important. Uh, issues when you grow up, speech. We discuss feeding, textured foods, malocclusion. That's growth and development. That is having teda meda teeth, not having good growth of the jaws. We disturb disturb sleep. Uh, ADD, ADHD, sleep apnea, other issues as adult neck pains. Uh, so there's no issues which happen because of the tongue tie quickly when we want to examine your baby how would we do that we would keep your baby like the picture on your right hand uh, the doctor is behind knee to knee position with the mother and the doctor from behind is examining and looking or examining at the tongue 
what is a tongue tie the picture on the left will show you an anterior or a visible tongue tie wherein the attachment of the tongue is somewhere in the middle of the tongue and the tongue is not able to raise up or elevate that's a tie okay where your finger is being passed after the picture which i'll show you and you hit a bump or a speed breaker uh, that or a wall that means there is a tie it is not sliding through and through under the tongue the picture on your right hand will show you a typical posterior or a submucosal tongue tie where there is cupping of the tongue the white patches we'll come to it why it is happening but here the attachment is not visible but the tongue is tied so there is an anterior tie which is visible and a posterior tie which is not visible to you okay so we said we will discuss about the clinical features or the way the anatomically or the structure presents itself and we look at the symptoms and if there is issue with breastfeeding is when we say okay you need to touch the tongue otherwise there is no need just by running your finger i said below the tongue if you hit a bump a wall or a speed breaker that means there is a tongue tie now this is a typical uh, picture which shows us uh, the cupping of the tongue the anterior posterior or the middle portion of the tongue is not able to move the tongue is not able to move side to side it becomes like a cobra tongue you know these are this is an extreme so a baby may have some or all of these features which present in this picture white patches now look at this baby this baby is from our practice and uh, you look at the white patches look at the tongue tie now we said we have to swallow so just close your mouth and let's swallow again where is the tongue it's brushing the palate it's brushing the palate on the top when it brushes the baby's milk what it has just sucked from the mother is also brushing against the palate and then the baby swallows so there should not be any remnant of the milk which is present on the tongue so if your baby has got white patches there is a possibility the baby can have tongue this is not fungal infection so a lot of fungal infections will be white now don't get scared about a mucormycosis which is being spoken about the white mucormycosis or the white fungus this is normally present in everybody's mouth okay but this what picture i'm showing you is because of the milk because the tongue is not able to function and swallow correctly okay what is a lip tie now you look at the lip these are examples of different lip ties all in our practices when you stretch the upper lip so i'm in the first picture on your left hand i'm trying to pull up can you see a white patch which is triangular that means there is tension when i raise the lip there is tension over there this lip will never be able to curl up and go on to or engage the nipple or engage the nipple it can't go up like this okay therefore the latch is not correct it's a loose latch the vacuum is not right and therefore there is air smacking which happens a uh, different example of tongue tie you have to look at the mobility of the tongue also uh, uh, sorry of the lip tie over here sorry the lip ties over here you look at the stretch stretch the lip and see if it is touching the tip of the nose there should not be any whiteness there should not be any whiteness here there is notching already in the second picture you don't want all of that that's a very tight lip out there now every tool in an experienced hands as a surgical tool is good there are some teachers from whom i have learned in the uk they use scissors to clip the tongue and the lip ties okay some teachers i have learned laser the advantage of the laser and also a cold laser not a hot laser not the diode laser which is present cold laser users in india would be hardly 3 or 4 i can count them on my fingers how many cold laser pick people do tongue tie and lip tie surgeries for infants two there is not a third person in india who is doing this so why a cold laser because it works at 100 degrees a hot laser works at 1400 degrees at 1400 degrees you are burning your baby's tongue and your baby's lip so the healing is bad babies sometimes give up nursing a cold laser works at 100 degrees there is no bleeding there is no need for antibiotics and it's a complete release what happens with the scissor is when you cut it starts to bleed so you as a surgeon just want to come back again okay because it started to bleed so the release is incomplete with a laser there is no bleeding and therefore i can see what i am doing 
therefore with a magnification with loops microscope increasing the size of the baby's tongue working with a laser a cold laser is the best in today's times now so to conclude my slide about tongue tie and lip ties we want mothers to have a good attachment the maternal bonding because if because of tongue ties and lip ties you are not able to nurse that bonding is lost we understand that the breast milk is the best home cooking antibodies health for the baby no other supplements required we also know that the air reflux can be avoided if you work on the baby's tongue if there is a tie coming back here we spoke about brain development sleep apnea that can be avoided if the tongue function is improved while sleeping breathing swallowing uh, because the baby will continue to nurse the mother will continue to express or to generate milk so that bonding ppd is avoided okay mother is happy the supply is maintained speech growth and development and all those issues are taken care of so if a baby is born with a tongue and a lip tie don't get scared it's manageable but you can solve so many problems and have a good quality of life both for yourself and your baby a uh, case report i will present only one today we have this 37 day old baby and uh, this baby had lot of issues uh in terms of shallow latch colic problems uh clicking and smacking noises spits up often uh the baby was never nursed and uh, when the baby was 37 day old until then the mother had moved to the formula had stopped feeding she tried and she she broke down while filling up this form in our office and she said doctor all of this is happening i reached you late okay so fine when in the first week she tried nursing she had blisters on the nipples and she was in pain the baby was biting left right center okay so when we looked at this baby this was our symptom which told us there is a problem that's why the mother came to us right we looked at this baby can you look at the baby's tongue and the lip presentation the first three pictures are that of the lip the bottom three pictures are that of the tongue the tongue is not able to move the lip is so tight can you see the white triangle in the lip pictures top row it's become white it's so tight so it's not able to flare out and then engage on to the nipple it's not happening the tongue is not able to the tongue is not able to express and work it's not able to elevate not able to help express so there is going to be difficulty so we make symptomatology look at the clinical feature we see limited elevation of the tongue we say there is impaired breast feeding and therefore we decided to nurse or uh, to do a surgery for this baby look at this this is immediately before and after of the surgery look at the lip on the left side upper one is before lower one is after immediately look at the tongue i have already started to elevate the tongue with my fingers so that's the this is immediate so there is no bleeding there is no sutures there is no general anesthesia there is no antibiotics and this mother was asked to nurse and she immediately nursed and when we got her back and this tells us about her story in terms of okay what all actually happened so she said there is a deeper latch okay sliding is less crying is less mother got to know that my baby was crying because of this reason so crying is less okay the sessions are 5 to 15 minutes the baby finishes okay and how many times every 3 to 3 and a half times so she is nursing 7 to 8 times in a day and wow we won it what was her experience excellent so it's not a difficult surgery but there has to be somebody who should be able to identify and understand that there is a problem i am now playing one video of one of our patients me and my wife operates together uh, for this surgery and uh, my wife was in tears i had to hold my tears back after this video when this this parent gave it to us hello all i have a month old son and his name is kabir so when he was around 7 to 8 days old our pediatrician informed us about the tongue and lip tie condition that he had and i also had some problems while feeding him 
the latch was very shallow and he used to make clicking noises and used to hiccup often the feeding duration was also very long around uh, 1 to 2 hours and i had to do it frequently so it kind of became a full time job for me and it was very painful as well so we were dependent on the formula milk as well so i wanted to get this result as uh, soon as possible we were referred to dr masani and at the beginning i was a little skeptical about the entire process but when we spoke to him he explained to us about this condition and how it affects the baby he also explained the entire procedure in details and was able to answer all our questions so we gained confidence because of this and we gave a go ahead for the process the process actually took only a few minutes to be done and once done i was asked to feed the baby the itself and i saw some immediate differences like the latch was deeper and the baby did not make any clicking noises now and now it's almost 2 weeks post surgery and i am able to see some drastic differences now like the latch is very deep now and the baby is able to sleep peacefully and the time feeding time has also reduced and i do not have any dependency on the formula milk now the weight gain is great so i'm very happy and satisfied with the entire process i would urge every mother who has a baby with this condition to approach the doctor and get this cured so did this this is what we as we we feel happy as surgeons that we been able to reestablish a bond between the mother uh, and the baby you know that motherhood that mahapan is incomplete without nursing uh, another of our patients this is the last one for the day and uh, yeah Hi, I'm Ankita Taukari. Um, my daughter Miraya. She was born on the 15th of September in 2020, and uh, on birth we were told that she has a slight tongue tie. So um, that's how my breast uh, feeding journey started from the hospital. So initially, uh, while I was over there, um, I used to breastfeed her directly, but she still had slight latching issues. So I started pumping and uh, feeding her. um however uh, a month later uh, we realized uh, that my doctor uh, my daughter was extremely cranky and um, she uh, had not uh, gained as much weight so when i consulted her pediatrician he immediately recommended that we should get her tongue tie released because uh, it was causing issues with nursing um a for a matter of fact i was in a lot of pain so i had to start using a shield or i would most of the times pump and then uh, bottle feed her um and uh, also my supply was starting to get affected um plus uh, she was very very cranky um her stomach wasn't uh, filling enough she used to have these loud uh, uh, you know noises that she would make when uh, she would uh, be nursing or when she would be sleeping um so um that's how i got referred to dr ikbal musani and i immediately met him exactly a month later after my daughter's birth and he gave me a very very um brief understanding on what is the cause um you know for all of this to happen so uh, he immediately explained the whole process to us on why it's important that ne it needs to be done um how the process is a very simple um, quick thing uh, that will happen in about 10 15 minutes uh, and uh, it was a laser process with the latest technology that he's got in means that i will be able to nurse her again if it means that uh, she is going to be far more comfortable uh, with using her tongue um and also um in my mind there was a slight thing that at 2 years if i figure out that she has an issue with her speech or pronunciation um i did not want to develop a little milestone uh, delay to happen 
so which is how we decided that we should go ahead and uh, get this release done um but end of the day um i think there's this immense happiness and satisfaction that i feel um that my daughter is now again learning to uh latch she's learning to suck she's learning to swallow um she's learning you know her tongue movements i feel very very happy when i see her roll her tongue in her mouth when she's sort of just playing or uh, you know when i'm nursing her so um i think what is most important is to understand uh, what is the cause and if you really are very sure about it um to sort of immediately get it released um and um, i think dr musani has immense immense knowledge about this subject and uh, he has very very patiently answered all my queries that i had and i had a lot of them uh, but i think every session that i go to him even now uh, i keep asking him so many other questions whether it's related uh, to a tongue tie lip tie or generally uh, you know whatever uh, his study has been on this subject uh, otherwise as well so um, i think this was a very very um, good uh, you know overall experience that i've had uh, and uh, I'm very very thankful to Dr. Musani for helping me uh, in continuing, continuing with, with my, my uh, breastfeeding uh, journey with my daughter. Thank, Thank you so much. So this was uh, Miraya's uh, mother, and uh, so we also feel nice. We feel happy that we are able to treat the cause. See, the problem was that there was the tongue which was tied, which everybody missed. I wouldn't want that mother to come to me at one month or two months or three months or six months. Wherein all the other issues have set in, in terms of supply, in terms of formula dependence. You know, the earlier the better. And they say that trying to feed, nurse, swallow, talk, eat with a tight lingual freedom, that is a tongue tied, is trying to run a marathon with your shoelaces tied together. Will you complete the marathon? Yes, maybe. Will you run efficiently and effectively? Definitely not. So why would you want to compromise on the quality of life of your baby and you as a mother if you are not able to breastfeed? That's the question which we are trying to ask. We are trying to say that if there is a problem with a tongue tie, please get it corrected. Read about it. There is a book by um, there is a book with the name of Tongue Tied by Richard Baxter. Uh, it's available on Amazon, the e-version, I think 10 or 15 dollars it is. It's a fantastic book. Read about it. Read about the understanding in terms of uh, how tongue can impact your baby's quality of life as well as the mother's quality of life. A bottle, of course, will never tell you whether it has pain or a poor latch, but a mother is acutely aware of it every time the baby nurses. Every time the baby is nursing, the mother knows that nothing is not अगर जो ऐसे लगता है तो प्लीज 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 गेट इट सॉर्ट इट आउट ओके योर आईज डू नॉट सी वॉट योर माइंड डज नॉट नो बट वंस यू हैव सीन इट इट इज इम्पॉसिबल टू अन सी सो इफ देर इज अ टंग टाई देर इज अ लिप टाई आई नो इट नाउ प्लीज हेल्प द बेबी एंड हेल्प दीज मदर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड री एस्टैब्लिशिंग देर बेस्ट ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग जर्निंग टू अस आर गोल इज टू मेक happier babies happier mothers healthier babies babies who will speak better eat better sleep better grow better and will not be having sleep apnea mal occlusions reflux gases cold pains biting nipples we don't want all of that so we are here on a journey to re establish breast feeding if there is a tongue tie and a lip tie please reach out read about it understand and treat the cause uh, i am happy to take any questions if they are there thank you so much all of you uh, for being a, a patient listener for a patient uh, for patiently uh, being the audience today and uh, this topic is very close to my heart to my wife's heart and we want to reach out to as many parents as possible and help all the babies and re establish the breastfeeding and the motherhood for the for the mother that bonding we would like to re establish thank you once again